Hi, I'm Nanette Giacoma, intuitive guide, author, and transformative artist, and today I'm going to show you what you can do with your plaster uh, face mold once you've made it. You can see that on the previous video that I did. Um, the first thing that I like to do is I like to whoops, grab my scissors, and I like to trim away the excess plaster. This, and make it uh, a little more stable, so that you can, um, it'll sit easily on a flat surface. And it also just makes the mask look better. So I'm going to do that first. Okay, so you can see that. And then I often will also take a piece of sandpaper and just sand the edges to smooth it out. So, and then sometimes too, I will actually sand the face if, if, if I want it smoother. Um, depends on what you're doing with it. it. Sometimes it really doesn't matter. Often I uh, add more, more plaster strips to it, or I will add um, joint compound or other plaster to smooth it out, something like that. So the, the, that may not be uh, necessary. Um, the, the next thing I do, so I'm going to take a plaster, um, like, you know, one and a half by two or, or two and a half, two inch by two inch, and I'm going to push it up into the nostril. And to do that, I'm going to use this uh, eraser end of the, uh, of the pencil. So it doesn't matter what kind of pencil it is. Um, and I'm just going to dip my plaster into some water and, you know, activate it to get that, that going. And then I'm going to take it and put it over one nostril. Try that again. I'm going to put it over one nostril, like so. It's harder to do when it's not flat. Um, and I'm going to, you know, push it into the nostril like that. And then I'm going to smooth it out. Okay. I'm going to smooth it out so that it's nice and smooth around, around the nose and around the nostril. So you can see there's one nostril and you do, and you do two layers of this cause you want it to be nice and nice and sturdy, but it's nicer than having like a hole in your nose. So, you know, you can see that the filled one looks better than, than the, uh, than the one without. So I'm gonna do this to the other one. So and I'm gonna do, uh, like I said, the next one. And so again, plaster gauze, gonna get it wet and get it so that it's, you know, nice and nice and soft and the plaster is ready to, to be applied. And then I'm going to do it again on the second nostril, you know, kind of put it down um, and then use the pencil to push it in gently and then just smooth it out. And so you can see that I just smoothed it out and um, got it kind of as even as I can. And, and then, you know, you'll just have a nice surface to work from. Um, I often use different tools, especially if I want to put on some, um, like joint compound or something like that, I will use tools, uh, pottery tools, to make different designs on, on the mask. Um, sometimes I, I make, you know, scratch marks, um, you know, just to make it interesting. You can also build up, you know, you can add additional pieces of plaster just to make it interesting. You know, you can put it uh, in, make bumps or bulges. Um, I'm probably going to make a, this is going to be a horned owl, so I will probably make a beak. So, and since it's going to be a horned owl, I'm going to be adding horns. And I will do this uh, probably by poking a hole in the mask and then pushing them through and adding a little bit of glue and some plaster to um, make sure that they are, are secure. But you can, you can put anything. I mean, first off is once, once you get to this place, it's good to paint it. So you're going to want to paint it first before you start gluing it just because it makes it easier to do. Um, 
and you can you know you can add more later but it's it's good to get it done and then you can start gluing things onto it i use a variety of glue i use tacky glue i use fabric glue i use a glue gun i use um jewelry glue because i glue all those kinds of things onto my mask sometimes i'm gluing fabric sometimes i'm gluing seashells sometimes i'm gluing feathers um, sometimes I'm stitching things. I like to stitch onto fabric and use that on my masks. So it's, it's kind of endless, you know, it's just a matter of you using your imagination and exploring and believe me, you know, it's not uncommon to, I've put things on and then had to rip them off and <laughs> put some more paint on. And, uh, so it's, it's really, if you approach it from a, from a, uh, like a creative process and really keep it in the process rather than getting really uptight about what the outcome's gonna be. It will get you to where you wanna go um, because this is a very uh, just sacred process. You know, having this, you can make your, your own spirit guide from, from this mask. So if you're interested in seeing the kinds of things that you can do with a mask, uh, you can go to my website, nanageocoma.com and that will give you some uh, ideas of the things that you can do. Um, and if you have any questions or anything that you would like to know that I might be able to help you with, don't feel free to reach out. Have a great day.